If you live in a mild climate, zone 9 and up, you do not need to bring your peppers indoors to protect them during winter. I don't care what they say, the peppers are much better off and have a higher chance of survival in the ground rather than digging them up, putting them through all that trauma and trying to bring them indoors. But you got to give them some protection and today I'm going to show you how I do it. It's late November and we're going to be getting a frost in the next couple of days or so. The last thing that I need to cover in my garden is my peppers. In fact, I don't even bother to dig them out and put them in a separate pot and put them inside. None of that, because I live in a mild climate, I can actually overwinter them in ground. In fact, my experience has been when I overwinter them in their original location rather than dig them up, I have at least 90% success rate versus when I dig them out, put them in a pot, and trim them down and do all of those things that people usually advise. Yeah, that is necessary if you live in a place that has killing frosts, but I don't. Look at that, the sun is shining in my face. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove all of my peppers. There are actually still peppers on my plants. I just kind of let them be until there's a danger of frost. After that, they become frozen peppers and you know how those are all squishy and stuff. So today's really my last day to harvest my peppers. So let's do that and then I'll show you how I protect my plants. I've got different types of pepper plants here. This is a lovely Chinese five color pepper. Look how pretty those pods are. They actually go through a range of colors from purple to orange to cream to red to yellow. Actually red is the last color, but yeah, five colors on one plant. It looks like a Christmas tree. So that's what I call a lovely harvest from three or four plants. Now mind you, all these plants were overwintered last year using the method that I'm going to be showing you. Now what works for me may not work for you. My climatic conditions, my microclimate may be different, but basically I leave the plants in the soil. I don't trim them, I don't remove the leaves, and I just cover them with a big piece of plastic. Now you may ask, oh my gosh, you're preventing airflow, but there's a lot of gaps here and there that will let the air in. It won't let enough of the cold in, but it will allow sufficient air to flow through so that the plants are happy enough. And they're not gonna be growing that actively anyway, so their needs are few. My logic behind leaving the branches as is, is what I found is that the frost tends to work from the outside in, so the more layers of protection that the plant has by way of leaves, by way of excess length of branches, the less chance to actually reach the core of the plant, the center, the roots, because the frost is kind of working on the extremities first. At least that's my logic. I always say that science has a ways to catch up when it comes to gardening and we will never know everything. So just try out, see what works for you. If you live in a mild climate, just try leaving the plant, one plant, two plants in ground over the winter and see if it survives for you. Then you know that it works. If it doesn't, well, you lost a couple of plants, right? Which you'll probably lose anyway if you've been taking it indoors because I found that I lose a lot of plants when I take them indoors during the winter. Then I layer on a really thick layer of leaf mulch because you want to protect the roots. That's the primary thing that you want to try to protect here because the plant will come back if the roots are protected. The branches may die off, but yep, that's where all the magic happens is under the soil. I would argue that leaves are probably the best mulch there is because in addition to being very lightweight, they also have air gaps between them that create additional layers of protection for those roots. So I'm just going to be using some binder clips to clip them in place, that's it. Yeah, there are going to be some gaps here and there, but it's enough not to let the cold really kill off the plant. Make sure you hold this down properly because if you've got some winds, it could knock the plastic off. Okay, it's nicely wrapped up. And what I also did, I found this wire and I wrapped it all around to hold it in place so that it doesn't fly off in the wind. That's probably the biggest danger. If we've got a strong wind, it might pull off the plastic. But other than that, that's all I do. So one more myth I wanted to bust here. 
I've covered this a little bit differently. I've got a tomato cage that I put on top of this pepper plant and I've covered it. And a lot of people will tell you, oh my gosh, the plastic, it's touching the plant. The places where it's touching the plant, it's gonna freeze, the plant's gonna die. And frankly, they are absolutely right about the freezing part where the plastic touches the plant, it will freeze. However, the plant will not die. Because you know what? That's why I did not chop off the branches because wherever the plastic touches, it might freeze the tips off, but there's still vibrant living growth underneath that the frost has not gotten to. So don't worry about the plastic touching the branches. Just don't chop off the branches first. We're going for layers and layers of protection here. So yep, that's all I do and it's going to stay this way until spring. I don't come and I water. I don't even bother to look at it. Once last frost passes, I will check on it. And at that time, I'll maybe trim off some of the really dead, dead branches. But for the most part, that's all I do and my plants all survive. Here's hoping. <laughs>